Hello everyone, my name is Linda Gundo. I am the CEO and founder of Linda Professional Creations. I am a master certified wedding planner and a certified florist. Linda Professional Creations is an event planning company and wedding decor. We cater to small and large events in and around the Philadelphia areas. We do New Jersey, Delaware. We also do destination as well. We do corporate events, fundraiser, summit. We cater to all aspects of events. So whether it's a birthday, an anniversary, a bridal shower, you and the list goes on. We also do home decor and home staging. So if you purchase a home or you're buying a home or selling and you want us to stage the home for you and to get perspective by how the home's going to look, we have 3D models and we also do different aspects to, you know, make things a little attractive. Even if it's your home, if you have a space, an office space, and you're trying to change it around, a restaurant, vice versa, we also decor the space as well. So today I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things. Consistency and, but money-wise and budget. And this kind of goes, I would say it goes with both brides and people who are getting married and also people who are having a business and some of the things that you should keep in mind of to do when you are done with these things and what are the first thing i'm going to talk about is my couples when you are for those who know me and they know that budget is one of the big things that i focus on a lot because budget set the tone of your event um the right budget can make any events turn into a masterpiece now, the average um, cost for planning a wedding nationwide is between twenty-eight dollars to $35,000. Um, and it, it varies based on states. Some states might be higher, some states might be lower based on some of the things that they offer. Um, so the one thing I would say is that when you get married, engage. After the dust settle and all the happiness and you decide to plan your wedding, first thing you should talk about, and I talked about this in my budget on planning video. Um, you can look at my prior videos and you'll see where I talk more in details about budget. So sit down, talk to those who are paying for your wedding. What if it's your parents, what if you, what is you and your spouse, what is family members, so on and so forth. Um but one thing I would say is for my couple, if you are planning a wedding, make sure you have money. And I hate to say, even if your mom is paying for it, even if your dad is paying for it, have something in a reserve. If it's not parents, now if you got your parents, and because when it comes to people paying for a wedding, they have limitation and restriction on what you can do and what you cannot do. So it's always good to have extra money in the bank, have extra money aside. So just in case one, let's say you find a vendor that you loved and your parents paying for the money or maybe your family is paying for the wedding and there's a deadline to sign that agreement you might lose on that venue space you can pay for that space and your parents can reimburse you later that's something you can do but if your parents say oh well i don't have that right now we're going to do this at a later date then you are left losing out what you want and then another thing is that don't bank your whole budget based on people paying for you it's your wedding it's your day I don't care if they're doing it from start to finish. Now, if your parents and you guys have the money and things is good, I understand that. It's fine. It's great. But when you don't have it, I'm not talking about people who family are upper class or medium class. Um, those are not the party that I'm talking about. I'm talking about medium to lower class people. So I let me just make that clear. I'm talking to my lower class bride and my medium class bride. So in the middle where, you know, your family want to help you, but financially they have a little bit, but they don't have too much. So you can be expecting to then to pay for a ten thousand dollar dress where they, you know, they don't have that whole money, or you can be trying to plan a fifty thousand dollars wedding if their budget is about fifteen thousand or twenty thousand, and so on and so forth. And also, you can be trying to hire planners and, and, and vendors who are hired. Because, for example, and I understand we all want great things, but you cannot expect to pay for, let's say, photographer. Sometimes maybe hiring a photographer. Oh, I can't even talk tonight. Jesus. May one, the cost of side price might be $4,500. And because they put a lot of ink, they 
that blood, sweat, and tears into the business. And this is one thing I want you guys to realize. That the price, one of the price is the price. And I understand sometimes people do charge a lot. I get it. But people put a lot of work and time and effort into mastering the craft. So when they are charging something, it's because they are charging because on the time, people don't realize how much time it takes into planning every day. Like, honestly, I don't care how much money you make as a planner or as a decor. Nobody can truly pay you for your time. They can compensate you for something, but they really can't. Because sometimes the time you would take to edit and cause and everything, it's a lot. You get a fraction of that bad because if we were charging you guys based on the timing, wedding would be skyrocketed to the roof. Nobody would be able to afford to get married. So when you're coming to somebody, make sure, one, you vent out to make sure that you can afford that person. Don't try to pay for something that you are scratching yourself thin just to keep up with the Joneses. So if you are planning your wedding and family say, okay, well, we're going to help you pay for it. Have money aside. Don't solely depend. I see a lot of family break up, family fall apart because these couples want so much more and they expect the family to cuff up everything, but they themselves have nothing to give. You can expect somebody to take, give you this luxury event on a budget that they don't have. So make sure that when you are planning your wedding, have something aside. You got a year. Save something. If that year is not, and I understand everybody want to get married, you're not trying to rush or anything. Have something smaller. You can have a smaller event and then later on do something bigger. But if you say, you know what, I want that big event, scratch it from that year to two years to give yourself time to save up. The idea goal is to save at least a year's salary for your wedding. So if you want to invite, you can be expecting to invite 250 people or 200 people or 100 people and you don't, you got fifteen or $20,000 for a wedding. That's not going to pay. So you have to be considerate. You have to be understanding. I understand sometimes people promise things and say they're going to do things, but if they promise and they don't do that, you can back step in and then you there's not a hold up. But if you don't have anything put aside, you are just holding on your wedding and you are just starting. And sometimes you lose out on great vendors. You lose out on great people because they realize that, okay, this person is not serious. So I don't want any. And shop around for the person that is within your budget. Make sure you find a vendor that you can equally pay for. And that would be okay. But you can expect people to do your favor. It's a job. It's like if it's your wedding, if the same way you expect that person to do what it's supposed to do on your wedding day, it's the same, this vice versa. So make sure you please save money to plan your event. Don't wait on, don't expect other people to take care of your wedding for you. And if you don't have enough, plan a smaller wedding. Don't go broke planning your wedding. Don't take all maxed up your credit cards. Take loan out. And I see people do that. Take loans out, max up your credit cards, take up all these expensive just to plan a luxury wedding. And then after you get married, you're in so much debt, you're so stressed out, you can't even enjoy your honeymoon stage because you have spent so much money, more than you can afford, trying to please other people because that's all you're doing. And no matter what you do, people are still going to talk about you. That's the reality. They're still going to find some reason to say something. So if you can afford it, please go ahead. If you cannot afford it, don't do it. And I'm saying that as a planner. And, you know, I would love the business. Don't get me wrong. But I don't, because that stress that you are putting on yourself, you don't have that glow anymore. You don't, you so stressed that wedding. Your wedding day should be one of the most happiest day. That glow, you should be relaxed. You should have a good time. Not stressed out when it comes to money you clench. And then you start to cut these other things down because you think you're going to do this. So please, if you don't take anything, save. If you want a big wedding, work towards it. If you can afford it, do it. If you cannot afford it, do what your budget is capable of doing. Don't try to please everyone. But once again, thank you for watching.
My name is Linda Gunnell. I am the CEO and founder of Linda Perfection Creations. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. You can sign up for my DIY wedding class where I teach you how to plan your wedding from start to finish. You can also sign up for a 30 minutes consultation where you can talk to me about your upcoming events and I can hear what you have and you can also listen to my services and all of this you can find it on my website at www.lindaperfectcreationevents.com. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.